These two questions, despite how different they look, are actually the same question. Or kind of. So let me explain how and why people are having issues with this. Right? Let's start with 3i. Now have a look at it. It looks fairly innocuous. Doesn't look like it can do much to you. What would you like me to do from line 1 to line 2? I think expanding. Makes sense, right? Because um, if you expand this, it'll talk to the other side. So you get 4x plus 8 equals 4x plus 9. And then, and then the cogs start to turn. And you think, okay, well, what, what do I do to the next line? Think about all of the, the rules of how you deal with equations. What can you do to the next line? You can, you can rearrange it in some way, right? Except you run into a teeny little problem, right? In fact, I don't even have to do much rearrangement at all. I notice that both sides have a 4x on them, right? So a normal thing to do would be to get all the x's on one side. So let's get all the x's off here. What am I going to have to do to get rid of all the x's over here? I'm going to have to subtract 4x from both sides. Except, how many x's does that leave with you on the left? None of them. So that leaves you with the 8 over here and the 9 over here. And you're like, oh no guys, it's not even, we haven't had the ball, bell for roll call yet and I've already broke maths. Okay, so what has gone on? Rewind a little bit. And this is why, don't have pens in your hands, I just want you to think. When I asked you to solve an equation at the beginning of the day, what did it mean? What were you searching for in terms of this line? A solution is a value of x, such that if you, if you put it in the first line, It'll, it'll work, it'll be true, right? Problem is, if we agree that line one and line two are the same thing, just dressed up differently, which they are, then there is no value of x that you can ever put into this thing that will make it work. Do, do you agree with that? Like whatever value of x you choose, one, three, a million, negative five, okay? These two objects here, four x and four x on both sides, they'll always be the same, whatever they are, and then you're left with these two bits that are different. Okay? Now this is very, very easy to illustrate if you think about this visually. Remember all of those um, things that I showed you before, like these things, right? to try and convince you? Visual proofs are very helpful. Can someone tell me, what does that look like? I know I've introduced this Y to help us solve the question, but you can graph this straight line. You've been able to do it for years now. What does it look like? How would you describe it? Can you give me some words to use to describe it? What is, um, what's that for tell you? The gradient. It tells you the gradient. So four, is that steep or shallow or going up, going down? What is it? It's going up and it's skyrocketing, right? So very steep. What about this eight? What does that tell you? It's the y-intercept. So something like this. Stay with me, stay with me. So, I think that's a reasonable graph of y equals 4x plus 8, and this happens to be negative 2. Okay. Now, think, think. If I now ask you to graph y equals 4x plus 9, again, it's got the 4x, which tells you the gradient. Again, what's the relationship between the gradient of this line and 4x plus 9? It's the same, right? If two lines have the same gradient, that means that they are parallel to each other, except there's just this difference here. It's been moved up a unit, do you agree? Yeah. So something like that. Okay. Now hold on a second. If that's 4x plus 9, and that's 4x plus 8, what this line is saying is, hey, tell me where they are equal, where they collide with each other, where they intersect, and where do they intersect? Answer, they never do. So therefore, there's no solution. Okay. Now, I have just enough time to explain why this question is the same question, but in reverse. I'm going to take the same suggestion we had before, right? which is to say, uh, let's expand this thing. Okay. So left hand side is going to give me? Good. And right hand side is going to give me? 2x plus 2. And then another x, you guys are bright, I'm going to do that in one line, and I'm going to say 3x plus 2. Now pause, think. Think, that's a dangerous thing to ask you to do. I want you to look at this line again. 
Just like you looked at this line. What this is asking is, when is this thing less than this thing? Well, you remember how I said to you before, I don't care what X you put in there, it'll never be true. Never, ever, ever, in a million years. This is the same thing, except the other way around. Because you can put any X you like in there, right? Put in X equals one, okay? One take away three, negative two. One plus two, that's three. That's less than that, isn't it? Isn't it? Eric, what are you thinking? You mean to multiply one by three, but isn't three minus three? Yes. Wait, which is still true, isn't it? It's negative three. Yes. Okay. Wow, that's great, isn't it? Bad maths, still true. Okay, good. All right, give me another number. Don't move, don't move. Put in x equals zero. When x equals negative 5. These things are always going to be true. Okay, you remember what I did over here? Do you remember I drew them? Can you tell me what 3x minus 3 looks like? It's, it intersects down here and it goes up. Right? Do you agree with that? That happens to be 1. Okay? What's that guy look like? Again, it's parallel except it's higher. So what this is saying is when is this line below this line? Answer? Everywhere, oh. all values of x. 